this is a four inch chuck oh and wait I was shorted they sold this to me as a four incher uh, it's only it's only a hundred millimeter I've been swindled <laughs> darn it well occasionally you have to clean them and this one's been used on the mill exclusively and everything that the mill cuts essentially goes inside or a good portion of it does and causes the works to gum up a little bit so occasionally you have to take them apart and clean them out no big thing but it's just a little more nuisance factory even chucks on on a lathe this one's stiff have to occasionally be cleaned well if you like to turn turn it so the chuck will engage on the part you do comes a point where so many external cleanings just don't help the insides this chuck was numbered from the factory I don't know if you can see it or not, but yeah, you can see it. There's a two right right here, three right here, and one right there. This one's numbered from the factory. And next thing you do is you take out all the jaws. slide out yeah this one's marked three and it was in the three spot one in the one spot yeah that leaves only one other thing left for the two spot you can't make a mistake there but what you'll see when you put them in order is that the teeth not actually in order let's see here see if I can get them the way they fall in uh, this one goes in between here there you go at the wrong end. Anyway, because the scroll is a spiral, these are timed different so they will engage as the spiral goes in. Usually it's a little easier to place these. Well, it is on my lathe anyway. And after you get those out, you can take out the little pinion gears that run the big ring gear that moves the spiral. Okay. Pardon me, I got the sniffles these days. I don't have the COVID. I can't get the COVID. I'm never out of here and I'm in the sticks. Not unless the cat brought it home. And uh, I don't think that happened. Hmm. 
best way to get that out. That works. And one of these came out too. These are what you're turning that turns the scroll. This little pinion gear. And there's three of them. Here. Come on. There it is. And there's the scroll. And you can see all the metallic goo and the grease. So we're going to clean all that out. Clean this out. And I like to use a uh, standard wheel bearing grease that I use, use for the car on these. It works good. Um, it's cheap and I have a lot of it around. And uh, it's not like you're using, not like you're driving this thing down the road like a nine, like a nine inch Ford. You just crank on it just to uh, tighten up your parts here and there. So I will clean these and return. Uh, what a mess! You go take a nap, and I'll I'll handle this mess. One hour later, two hours later, three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. I am back with all the clean parts and ready to reassemble. So we're going to start with the scroll. Put a little grease on the face. Doesn't require a whole lot. All it does is adhere to metal particles coming through anyway. Grease on the outside so it slides in and out, preferably without getting caught or stuck. Sorry about bumping the camera, but I'm hugging around this thing so you can get the view that I get. That way I can kind of see what you guys are seeing. Then you drop the ring gear into place. Move it back and forth. Okay, a little bit of grease on the top of the ring gear. You don't have to overly grease it, but you do want a little bit in there. The uh, pinion gears that run around this is going to spread it around. And a little grease up on the outside. Let me wipe my hand a little bit. Now. It is time for the pinions. The little pinion gears that go around the side. Grease the tip. And actually grease the, the hole a little bit where they go through. I'm going to grease them all while I'm up here. I'm going to clean off that little surface rust that was on this chuck just to pretty it up. I'm going to oil it up again. Um, handling a chuck will cause that because your hand has not only oils but acids to it. And uh, even though my chuck was oiled, I still handled it a lot. Okay. Now I slide these in. And when you slide them in, they go into a hole in here. Then you put in the <clears throat> pin that holds it in place. And this pin keeps that from backing out. And you grab the next one. Grease the tip and repeat the process. These have no particular order. They aren't numbered and they don't uh, make a big difference in the grand scheme of things. Let me tap that in a little bit. Okay. Sorry about that, but. It's easier for me to tap that in without shaking the camera all up. 
when it's in my lap and sit on the table. And the last of these. And from the side. Slides in. It's screwed into place. And then the cover. Just a little film grease on here. Doesn't really make contact, except in here. Much around there, and you don't want it in case of water intrusion or anything, you don't want it to rust up. And there you go. There. Slide straight down. I'm going to lock my hands a little bit, keep the mess to a minimum. I will put the... Well, I still got a little bit of greasing left to do. Okay. And you drop in these three screws here. Okay. You have a couple of threads in place. And then bring them on in. You don't have to overly tighten them. These things aren't uh, holding the wheel on your car or anything. Just a good snugging. I take this thing about down about once or twice a year. Oops. And that one has a little something in the hole. I blew them out, but you always get everything. And the last one. Let me wipe this down. Okay. Now you can see the scroll. Yeah, let's get turn around good. Okay. Throw in number one. All right, that's number three. Number one, number one. Okay, just a little on the track just to make it nice. Give it a little bit of lube on there. Wipe the excess off on the scroll. Number two, that's number three. That should be number two. Take some grease off my finger a little bit. Okay, there, number three coming up. What I'm looking for is the is the first part of the scroll to come up and looking for the jaws, the start of the, the scroll thread. Oops. And when I find everything and I have them all timed, they should all close in simultaneously on the center. If not, you pull it back and Get that one. Let's see where that scroll. Didn't catch that one. 
at the same time. That looks like it missed one. Back and back out. I missed the first one. It is, is I was visual, visually looking for the end of that in the groove and it has to come a little before because the uh, parts of the scroll that engage that are a little wider than the groove you can see. And all together. A little tightness there. This will always tighten the center, even when new. And there you have it. It's a lot easier to turn than it was when I pulled it last night. Give it a good wipe down, which gives it a nice little lube coating. And there you have it. You can't beat a freshly clean chuck with a stick. Well, you can, but it, well, a good wood stick won't even won't mark it up and won't hurt it too bad. But there you go. It might take you a couple of times. The first time you try it, maybe even maybe an hour's worth of frustration to get these back in where they all simultaneously meet in the center. But if your chuck isn't marked, do mark it. With, with numbers, number stamps, or nail polish, whatever whatever you have. Put one color here, one color here, and no color there, and mark the sides accordingly. That way you can get the, the jaws back where they go. Now, you could put this thing with the jaws in, in any way, and it'll be harder to time to get, it, to get it to center, but it could be built that way, but you might have to re-grind the center in it. So I don't recommend that. And uh, I'd love to get me a four jaw for my, my little rotary table. Because sometimes you want to do eccentrics. And you want to want to have it off center. And you're not always wanting to do the lathe. And even the lathe is hard to do eccentrics in. But uh, it's neither here nor there. Yeah, it's done, ready for reuse. And I'll catch you later.